Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, in front of you is our old friend, the vacuum tube inductively coupled plasma generator. So what I'm going to cover today is something which I might have forget to cover in the previous video about how to calculate for some significant parameters for such a vacuum tube type inductively coupled plasma generator. The video's link will be put below in the description of this video. Uh, I'm going to talk about that if you add a heavier load to the tank circuit, how this oscillator will behave. So to get it start, let's measure its normal operating frequency first. I will turn this oscillator up to a very low power state, around 500 volts input on the anode. Okay, now 500 volts on the anode, and uh, let's see. Uh, one probe of this uh, multimeter has been grounded, so just capacitively coupled the frequency here, around 40 megahertz, right? Very stable. And uh, if I took a tube of neon, oh nope, nope, argon, yes. Uh, I have a tube of neon here, but this is argon uh, for better inspection since it glows more, uh, less intensively. And I put it here, you see just, oh, maybe I turn it off? Oh yeah, it is off. Now let's turn it up. Just capacitively coupled, right? Quite nice and uniform. And I put it here. It will transit from this mode to the inductively coupled mode. This is normal in my previous video, but if you look closely and carefully, when I extract this tube slowly, there will be a sudden the power goes up. It's now. The power is up, insert, the power is down, up, down. This will be more clearly on this tube of neon since it's, it will glow more intensively. Right? The power goes up, down, goes up, down. So, why is that? First, safety first, I will turn it off. So why that happens, it's because when we did the calculation for the divider, the feedback, the main oscillating capacitor, those two capacitors form the divider for the grid. When we did calculate for those values, we have an end power output at a certain input voltage. So if you add a very heavy load, heavier than you expected into the tank, it will extract more energy than you want, and the feedback and energy or the voltage is not able to start, not enough, able to start the, maybe not start, to maintain the oscillation. So that is what happened. But why is it, why it still in oscillation state and not stop oscillation? That's because it starts to oscillate at a parasitic frequency. I can show it to you by using the meter and to do the insert experiment again. Turn the power up its low voltage state, show you the matter, now normal operation frequency, insert in the tube, capacitively discharged, now parasitic oscillation starts, and when I extracted the tube to a certain state, okay now the frequency, oh okay now frequency 
you can see maybe show you at the post post time it's a frequency uh it's hard since this is a uh, digital and not very expensive multimeter hard to catch the frequency but uh but I guess you have noticed that the frequency is back to normal since the oscillation isn't quite stable because it's on the very low power state the multimeter can't catch the oscillation you see many uh, still many parasitic oscillation but you can see the main oscillation like this the a thick black uh, just that uh, so let's do some experiment for fun from now uh, first turn it off okay it's off and the anode voltage back to zero and test if it's too hot nope nope not too hot uh, when I start building this oscillator I didn't employ the water cooled resonant coil just in my just like in my uh, solid state generator so it's air cooled forced air cooled there is a big fan underneath the camera here for the cooling and uh, oh I remember one thing uh, when the parasitic oscillation starts you can hear a very strange noise from the vacuum tube that is really from the vacuum tube screwed not from uh, every, anywhere else and I will try to show you about that by turning off the fan and do the experiment again okay now the fan is off and maybe you are going to hear that or maybe not I'm not sure just be careful Maybe turn up your volume. There is a screaming. It depends on how good my camera is. Now, turn up the cooling fan and uh, let's do something for fun. That will be full power on the neon and argon okay start the oscillation at one kilovolt on the anode that's medium power state and start the coupled plasma and turn it up to three kilovolts full power now Ooh, the tube is quite hot I need forced ventilation to cool the tube. I don't want to destroy the tube like in last summer. Okay, change to argon gas. One last test for power. One kilovolts on anode. Start the oscillation. Start the coupled plasma. Find the critical, critically coupled point, the distance, the coupling coefficient, and uh, now it's 3 kilovolts. Ooh, I can feel the heat of the glass, the radiated heat, very hot. Uh, one last thing is that uh, when you increase the power, uh, which means you increase the anode voltage the coupling coefficient could be larger uh, that means the critical point which is your design uh, coupling coefficient will be gradually increased until your design point so that's why when the power is very low the parasitic oscillation is quite easy to happen or 
That means the oscillator is not very stable and at the rated voltage you see even I put the tube very close closely to the resonant coil the parasitic oscillation will still not happen that because the feedback is feedback ratio is still enough or larger than we calculated to maintain the oscillation so that might be all about today's video and um, enjoy your day